Welcome to the screening pit stop. We're going to talk about how to do a head and neck cancer screening today in preparation for the NASCAR event. Um, most of the patients, all of the patients who are going to be coming in have already filled out a history a screening form. So you'll have that to go off of and that will be discussed by Edie at a different set, uh, setting. Uh, and so we're just going to go right to the exam itself. So when the patients come in, um, a lot of times they'll have hats on, okay? So the first thing you want to do, of course, is just a general examination. Maybe have them take their hat off so that you can examine the scalp and the skin. Uh, and then some of them will have um, uh, uh, chewing, tobacco. chewing tobacco, thank you. They're going to have chewing tobacco, so you might want to have them spit that out too before you get too close to it. Uh, and basically what we'll have is everything set up here for you. We'll have an otoscope with speculums. Okay, so they go on pretty easily, just a simple little twist for those of you who haven't really used one. And they will be battery powered. Um, they might not have the little pneumatic bulbs. If you have one of those, that's better to get a better look at the ear. But if not, that's okay. We're really looking for cancer here, not ear disease today. So we'll just start, we'll take a look in her ear. In order to do a proper ear exam, you want to lift up on the pinna, on the outside of the ear itself, and pull out a little bit. Then insert this into the ear, and as you're looking, to make sure you're not going in too far, just take a peek and almost angle back and up a little bit until you see the eardrum, okay? When you see the eardrum, just make sure that uh, it's clear, that there's no obvious um, masses filling the ear canal in front of it, uh, and that, again, that there's no obvious lesions, uh, abnormal moles, or anything on the ear itself or in the ear canal. That's really what we're focusing on today. All right, and obviously you're going to examine both sides. Next, for nasal examination, we're going to use the same otoscope, okay? Um, just have the patient tip their head up a little bit, and you can just take a peek in the nostril on each side. And again, we're not focusing on nasal disease. We're really just looking to see if they have anything obvious that is concerning. The big kind of important part of the exam here is the oral cavity and oropharyngeal examination. So we're going to have, I usually recommend using two tongue blades, two tongue depressors. Have the patient open their mouth, good, and you can use the two to really get a nice examination. Examine the dentition, so kind of start from outside and work your way in, sorry about that, okay. And you can work your way around, make sure the lips are healthy, making sure the inside of the lips are healthy, go down into the sulcus here to look at the gingiva, okay, and the two sticks really allows you to get in there and spread the, spread the uh, tissue apart. You can really look down nicely. Good. Have the patient lift up their tongue, lift the tongue to your roof of your mouth, look under the tongue, and you can push aside to look at the floor of mouth, like that, and frankly, it'll probably help if I have my light on. Okay, I just turned my headlight on. You'll see the difference right off the bat. The headlights are pretty self-explanatory. They have a little dial on them, so that um, and you'll have a battery pack on your waist uh, that um, will allow you to get a much better look into the back of the oral cavity. You can see here's the back of the tongue. I'm pushing aside, and again, she makes this quite easy for us. But there's nothing of concern here. Healthy looking tissue. Then push down on the tongue while the tongue is in the mouth. Don't have them stick out their tongue for this. Have the tongue in the mouth, almost like they're yawning, and have them say, ah. Ah. Uh, and you can see all the way back, ah uh, again. Ah. Uh, Good. Okay. All of the um, booths will have garbage cans in them to dispose of all of these devices, all of these um, the sticks and the speculum, those are not reusable, so throw them away. The next part of the examination is the neck examination, and for, for this, again, look at the skin of the neck to look for any sort of concerning moles or lesions. Uh, a lot of these pa patients spend a lot of time in the sun, so you want to make sure that they're not um, harboring melanoma, for example, or, or basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, so look at the skin of the neck. Again, we've already looked at the ear, but look behind the ear. Okay. And now to do the neck exam, you're just going to start by feeling high up in the neck and work your way down along the sternocleidomastoid muscle. 
Okay? And sometimes if you have them lean their head forward a little bit, you can actually push in around and behind the muscle a little bit better. And you're feeling for any abnormal lumps or bumps, anything firm or immobile, those are concerning findings. Make sure you examine the entire neck, including right in the front, down below the, the larynx. Have them swallow to examine the thyroid gland. Go ahead and swallow. Good. And then the supraclavicular region as well. Okay. And then lastly, we do actually have mirrors to do an indirect laryngoscopy. These are, uh, these are dental mirrors. The angle is um, not as acute as some of the other mirrors, so you have to compensate for that a little bit. And we do have some defog that we can use so that you're able to get a good look. Okay. So, put your light back on, have the patient open their mouth, stick out their tongue, and you're going to explain this to them that you're going to grab their tongue, and as they kind of tilt up a little bit, you just have them say E, uh, uh, good, beautiful, uh, and just hold that mirror just under the uvula, and you get a nice look of the larynx. E again, uh, very good. What we're looking for down there is, again, any sort of concerning masses. In, in general, in the, in the mouth, thank you, in the mouth, in the back of the throat, in the larynx, we're looking for any concerning masses, uh, whether they just be swellings or uh, exophytic white lesions, um, anything that looks asymmetric or out of the ordinary. Uh, also in the larynx, you're looking for lesions on the vocal cords themselves. You're looking for lack of mobility of one of the vocal cords. Um, if they are um, weak or totally paralyzed, that's obviously a concerning finding. And I believe that concludes our headache examination. Thanks for joining us at the pit stop. <laughs>